All right, chemistry. It is our um, notes for types of reactions. So you can see that we're looking here at our types of reactions today. Um, so hopefully if you don't have this printed off or you didn't pick up a copy of this from me, um, you can kind of follow it along and maybe take your own notes for this as well. But this is your direct instruction video when it comes to the types of reactions. So when we start to look at this, um, there are really five types of reactions that uh, we'll see in chemistry. Okay, so most things can bro be broken down into these five types of reactions. Now we look at this in terms of some patterns. Um, so I usually like to kind of uh, break these up pattern-wise into two different parts, and I like to lump these two together. So this is our synthesis reaction. Sometimes it's also called a composition reaction. Okay, and this is our decomposition reaction. And what these are is they're kind of reverses of each other. So you can see that we have, if this was element A and this was element X, we would then form AX together, and this would be the reverse of that. So I like to think of it as 1 plus 1 equals 1, okay? And so two things together will become one thing. And then the other one is our decomposition where we're taking one thing and we're splitting it apart into two. Okay, I kind of look at this if we're trying to look at some maybe hints here. Uh, generally, I see these as maybe ionic equation or uh, compounds. So we start to look here and say, well, this might be a metal and this might be a non-metal. And then we're making an ionic. So that's kind of a general thing we like to see sometimes. And the reverse would also be true of starting with an ionic and then making it into a, a metal and a non-metal. Um, I always say watch out for your diatomics. Okay, so watch out for what happens with your diatomics because usually that non-metal could be something like some chlorine gas or some bromine or some iodine, um, any kind of a... a a diatomic so watch out for the diatomics when you do this generally these synthesis reactions happen naturally so usually there's energy that will be um, released um, but that means that the decomposition reactions are usually the reverse which means that they take energy in order for this reaction to occur so not naturally going this way but mostly naturally going this way so we kind of see this. Usually in our decomposition reactions, we expect there to be some kind of a catalyst, maybe. Okay, a catalyst that could be um, added, and usually we talk about the catalyst above here. Um, there could be, uh, again, we might heat something, so we might show that there's heat, but generally we always write something above the arrow to show that that decomposition reaction is going to form. If I think in terms of like maybe movie plot, so to put it more into a, a better perspective, this is, this is our couple going together and then they join together at the end where this would be our movie plot where we have a couple that ends up splitting apart. So it's kind of like the combination of how we look at those two things. When we, uh, what I like to do is I also like to break this up into talking about these two together. So our single replacement and our double replacement because both of these are replacement type of reactions. We're looking at, is it a single element that's doing a replacing, or is it a two swapping reaction? So essentially, single replacements, we're always looking for that single element. And typically, we would see these as maybe metals that are doing the replacement. So a metal replacing another metal Okay, so we're looking again at something that's ionic in nature. Um, and then our non-metals could also be replacement. So we could have this being a non-metal replacing another non-metal. But it's always likes replace likes. Okay, so something like a metal replacing a metal or a non-metal replacing a non-metal. And you can kind of see that you're looking for those replacements, okay? So we start with a compound plus uh, an individual element, or and then we do that replacement. Our double replacements, though, are really that swapping 
that take place. And a lot of these, again, we see these as ionic. Okay, so a lot of ionic compounds that happen here. So that metal, non-metal, replace the metal, non-metal. Again, likes replace likes. Okay, so to kind of, again, put this maybe into kind of a real-world perspective, this would be our uh, couple here. Then in our movie, we have some new character that's introduced, and they end up breaking it up, and then we have somebody that's by themselves again. Um, where in this double replacement reaction, we have this couple and this couple, and then all of a sudden something happens, so there's a switch between the two couples. Okay, the last one is combustion. And I think combustions are the easiest of all of them to recognize, okay? Because there's a very set structure when it comes to combustion. You're always going to see oxygen that's on the products, uh, excuse me, on the reactant side. So there's always oxygen on the reactant side. And then you always have the same products. So the products are always CO2 and H2O. And it doesn't make any difference whether the CO2 is listed first or the H2O is listed first. It's just that you have those two as the same two products. You're always going to have uh, a reactant that's going to be O2. So we're always adding oxygen to it. You can't do combustion without adding oxygen. And then typically what we expect to see is some form of a hydrocarbon. And when we say hydrocarbons, we're really saying anything that has carbon, hydrogen, and maybe oxygen to it. So these are usually typically our carbohydrates, our sugars, our um, any kind of a compound that has those. So it's our fuel sources. So these are really like trees, um, gasoline, um, Again, sugars that we consume, so foods are all considered combustions. You're considered a combustion reaction. You eat these things, you breathe the oxygen, you exhale carbon dioxide, and you um, expel some water in the process. If we think about this, the reverse of this is something that we talk about in terms of um, how plants grow. So this would be our, our actual photosynthesis reaction. So usually what we end up seeing is, is that we get this and we get energy on this side. Well, if we put the energy with the water and the CO2, the plants will grow. So in other words, the plants are our fuel source and they exhale some oxygen. So again, this is kind of how we look at this reaction. Is a, it's the opposite of photosynthesis. Now we're just going to kind of walk through and do some quick uh, look at them. Uh, again, we're trying to predict... Uh, or, or name what type of reaction we're looking at by just looking at the structure itself. So when I look at this first one, I see I've got some sodium, some chlorine. There's that diatomic. It's making an ionic compound, so this has got to be a synthesis. Okay, when we look at our second one, I see uh, this ammonium and this hydroxide. So this is really an ionic compound. We've got another ionic compound. We're swapping places to form two new ionic compounds. So this is a double replacement. Okay, Let's look at the next one here. We can see that we've got an iron with the iodine. So this is an ionic compound. Now we've got that solo aluminum. So this is definitely going to be a, a single replacement. Now this next one here, oh, structure-wise, I see carbons, I see hydrogens. There's that oxygen that's being added. We're making the products, CO2 and H2O, so this is our combustion. All right, we look at this next one. I've got water here. I'm making two separate individual elements. This has got to be a decomposition. Now we go look at the next one. We've got our aluminum. We've got our um, fluorine. It looks like a single, single, probably going to be putting these together to make a new compound. Looks like it's a metal and non-metal, so an ionic compound. So like Al, 
f3. We'd balance this out with 3 there, 2 there, 2 there. So this is a comp, um, synthesis. Here we have our iron reacts, um, iron metal reacts with our copper to nitrate solution. So I've got single iron metal. So that's a single type of substance. And then I've got a copper to nitrate. This is that ionic compound. So like a CuNO3. So copper to nitrate. So this is going to be definitely a single replacement. Our next one here, we've got solutions. So this is kind of a key thing that I've got two different solutions. One's of sodium iodide, one's of lead chloride. So these are our two ionic compounds. This is definitely going to follow that um, double replacement. The sodium and the lead are going to swap places. So it looks like we're going to make some lead iodide and some sodium chloride. So this is a double replacement. We have our aluminum oxide breaks down into its component elements. Okay, so aluminum oxide, this is an ionic compound. I'm just going to write out the formula here. Three of those, two of those. So aluminum oxide is going to break down. That breaking down comment makes that a decomposition. Okay. And we finally get our methanol. Okay, methanol, they go give us the formula. Looks like it's going to be a fuel, so something that we can burn, okay, in the presence of some oxygen gas. So there's our O2 that's being added. So this is a combustion. Okay, so again, some tips as you go through. You should be able to kind of identify whether you see them as equations, okay, with or without products, or whether you see them as word statements. You should be able to identify the various types of reactions. Now let's look at the back side of this. Okay, so the back side. Um, we're going through and again, walking through and doing some example problems. Again, I like to do this. Okay, this is our process. We write out our chemical formulas. We make sure we figure out which type of reaction it is. We're going to write out our products, okay, and then we do our final balancing. So this is kind of just a process to kind of keep you guided as you go through these. And again, this little box here is kind of a nice little cheat sheet for us to make sure we're identifying our types. So I look at this first and it says I've got some uh, solutions of lead to nitrate and potassium iodide. So I'm adding those two solutions. These are ionic compounds, okay, so it looks like it's going to be the lead taking the spot of the potassium, potassium taking the spot of the lead, so this is going to be our double replacement that I can see. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to start by making my lead to nitrate. So PB, remember that the Roman numeral tells me I'm a plus 2 nitrate, NO3. That's a minus 1. This is from our polyatomic list. It's on our green sheet. So I need to have two of those. And these are solutions, so I'm going to put aqueous here. Then we're going to have our potassium iodide. So that's K for potassium. Potassium is a plus 1. Iodine is, okay, because it's an ied ending, it's just iodine. It's a minus 1. So our Ki, and that's going to be an aqueous solution as well. So now we've got our two reactants. We're going to put our arrow to show our products. This is where that double replacement is going to come in. So we're going to make lead to iodide. So some PBI. Remember, this was a plus two. This is a minus one. So we're going to need two of those. And this is going to be, we're not sure what the state is of this. So we'll just leave this one as unknown yet. Plus our potassium nitrate, so KNO3, and that was a plus one and a minus one, so we're good there. 
So now I'm going to just balance this. I see I have two iodines, so I need to have two there. I know I need to put a two there. And now that balances my, my nitrates. Okay, so a little bit of a process. I went through and kind of wrote out my formulas for smart my reactants. Make sure I figure out what type of reaction is. Write out my correct formulas for the products. Um, and then balance it. So let's look at the next one. Okay, there we go. We've got some methane gas. Okay, so methane gas is carbon tetrahydride. So carbon tetra is 4, hydride is H, so really we're looking at CH4. This is starting to tell me that this is a fuel. Okay, this is my fuel source. And it's going to react with oxygen gas. Okay, remember oxygen is always O2. This is a gas. This is a gas. Okay, so we're putting it in our physical states. This is looking very much like a combustion reaction. So if it's a combustion reaction, it's always the same two products. It's going to be some CO2 and some H2O. Okay, and these are typically in the gas states as well. So we're just going to have some gases of those. Now we just need to go through and balance it. So I like to do this. Whenever we do the balancing of these, do the carbon first, hydrogen second, save the oxygen for last. So carbon first, carbon, carbon, that's good. Do the hydrogen next. There's four here. We're going to need to put a two there to get our four. Then we're just going to count our oxygens. So I go back here to the reactant side, or excuse me, to the product side to count my oxygen. So I do reactant side, reactant side, product side. So I've got two here, two here, so that's a total of four. I just need to put a two there, and then I'm balanced. Okay? So again, kind of go through, balance your combustion reactions. Now we've got a next one. We've got some solid iron. Okay, that's going to react with oxygen gas. So this looks like it's it's a single and a single, and we're going to form iron that's going to have a plus three cation. So it's making an ionic compound. This sounds very much like a synthesis reaction. So I'm going to write out my iron, my oxygen gas. Iron's a solid. Okay, I see that I've got my Fe plus my O2. I'm going to now make my iron oxide. So iron, that's going to be with the plus 3. Oxygen, minus 2. So this is going to be 2 of these, 3 of those. All right. And we're not sure what the state will be for this compound, but we do know that it's a correct formula. So plus 3 times 2 is plus 6. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, so that cancels out. So we made a good ionic compound. Now we're going to balance this out. So I see I'm going to go with the oxygen first. There's 2 and 3, so I'm going to put a 3 there and a 2 there. That gets me 6 oxygen on each side. Then I'm going to have my 4 iron left. So that's my reaction for this one. Definitely came out as a synthesis reaction. Next one we've got, we've got some solid platinum okay and chloride so this is an ionic compound no oh, it's decomposing so that's a pretty easy one for us to see that this one's going to split apart into its two elements so platinum is hold on this is what i'm going to grab my periodic table for platinum pt okay so ptcl and platinum is a plus four, chloride is a minus one, so I need to have four of those. So PtCl4, and this is breaking down, okay, it is a solid. So it's going to make some platinum and some chlorine. Now, here's the trick here, that chlorine never is by itself. Remember, it's one of the diatomics. It's going to come off as a gas. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're putting down that we've got chlorine gas. Okay, so that's the trick one in that one. That's why we watch for our um, diatomics in these types of reactions. So now we look at this and balance it out. I've got four here, so I just need to put a two there and now it's balanced. Our last one 
that we've got is going to be some solid copper. So this is copper that's being added to a solution of the silver nitrate. So this sounds to me like I've gotten a single person here that's going to replace one of the metals in our silver nitrate. So we've got our copper, that's our single. We've got our silver nitrate, AgNO3. Okay, so this is a solid and this is a solution. Okay, and it's going to react. And so this is where we're going to now see the reaction occurring. It looks like a single replacement. Copper is going to replace. Okay, it told us that copper is going to be a plus two ion. So it'll be CuNO3. We're going to need a two there because the nitrate was a minus one. And now the silver is going to be by itself. Okay, and so we've got that as our reaction. We now need to just make sure that we balance it. I've got two nitrates, so I need to put a two there. I need to put a two there then. Looks like we're now balanced. Okay, so these are kind of how we go through and do these. I'm going to link in today also a little video to kind of show some demonstrations of these. Um, since I'm not in a chemistry room, I'm not going to be able to show you some live demonstrations. Um, but I do have, uh, there's a video that I have that I can pull up quick and it'll show the different types of reactions and kind of how they work. Um, your rest of your assignment now, you need to go through and take notes on 8.3. So that's uh, notes that we're going to cover tomorrow. So it'll be good to go through and do your reading before. And if you're following along with your practice sheet, you should have done the part one yesterday. This part two is now identifying our types of reactions. So this would be the other part. Remember, this is due tomorrow afterward through doing um, our notes on part three. So this is the next one. And remember, we've got a test coming up as well by the end of the week. All right. Uh, if you do have questions, uh, contact me, and we'll make sure that you get your an uh, questions answered. Have a good day.